Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here. Today is the 17th, Monday, the 17th of February, 2020. And uh, welcome to the show. Let's get started. Uh, let's open up the charts right here. You know, we've saw quite large price increases in Bitcoin. And nothing goes up in a straight line. Now, listen, there's only one thing that goes up in a straight line. And that's the Dow Jones Stock Exchange. <laughs> But everything else, you know, generally goes up in a jagged. It goes up for a little bit and it falls a little bit and goes up a little bit. And that's what Bitcoin's been doing. But it's been having a real nice bull run. Investors are strongly hodling Bitcoin, while more are interested in buying Bitcoin. And yeah, Bitcoin is becoming much more stable as an asset class. I remember the days of volatility in Bitcoin, massive volatility. Now we don't see those huge moves down. And those huge moves up so much. It's a slow, steady increase when it goes up. But it's nothing really all that sudden, you know, like it used to be. If you guys remember what Bitcoin used to be like, and you know what it's like now, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It says volume is rising, but volatility is down, which could be due to increasing derivative markets. I, I tend not to really think so. I think the volatility is down because of the hodling army. This is a, one of the reasons why gold doesn't have as much. Look, the derivatives market can create volatility. But hodlers, and that's what you call Bitcoin people who massively hoard Bitcoin, you know. They call them hodlers. But on the other side of that coin, gold has the same sort of a following. And we don't call them hodlers, we call them stackers, you know? A little bit different terminology, but it's exactly the same thing, stacking or hodling. Gold, gold bugs, they, they stack gold. Hodlers, they hodl Bitcoin. It's the same thing now, guys. Bitcoin price has taken a breather as it hovers around $9,800, while the volume remains strong above $1 billion, in top 10 exchanges with real volume, the seven-day average real trading volume keeps on rising, now closing to a daily level of $800 million. Volatility, meanwhile, is still down. Despite the price rising last week, we haven't seen a large spike in volatility since late October in comparison to the beginning of 2019. The bull run of 2020 didn't see the same extremely da extreme daily returns either. The low volatility could be related to the increasing derivatives market for the digital asset, which keeps the price action more stable. I think that it's more the hodlers that is keeping the price stable. That's that's my opinion. Uh, investors are not really ready to sell their Bitcoin. Uh, while buying Bitcoin is, is gaining traction, selling Bitcoin isn't, as per data provided by Glassnode. There is no significant spike in the count of transactions to the cryptocurrency exchange addresses. Uh, yet this is because hodling is growing more and more across the world, you know. Now, here's what I see coming, guys, in the not-too-distant future. I see it as a distinct possibility. I'm not saying this will happen, but I see it as a distinct possibility that gold and Bitcoin... When the dollar dies, and I think this is coming pretty soon because the worst conditions get in the world, the more the central banks are going to stimulate with these funny money that they create from nothing. It costs them nothing to make it. They just make as much as they want. But that's going to lose, it's going to lose its uh, appeal to investors. And so investors are starting to eye up other asset classes like Bitcoin or gold or Whatever they can get that's out of the dollar. And there's not very many avenues out of the dollar. Uh, other than going into some other things like the markets and stuff where you're still in the dollar. And so what we're going to see is we're going to see more and more people hedging their portfolio against the dollar. And as we see that, we're going to see the two main places they're going to go to hedge their portfolios against the dollar is cryptocurrencies and gold and silver right and what we're going to see happen is is we're going to see that after a while when the dollar gets weaker and weaker they're not going to say well my 
Bitcoin is worth so many dollars anymore. You're going to say my Bitcoin is worth so much gold. And the vice versa of that, if you've got gold, you're going to say, well, my gold is worth so much Bitcoin. And Bitcoin and gold are going to start to be transferable between each other. And so if you want to send gold, you'll send Bitcoin. And if you want to store gold, you'll store Bitcoin. Or if you want or gold, either one, they're going to be, I think they're going to be transferable between the two. Not with a hard peg. Like Bitcoin's not going to be pegged to gold and gold's not going to be pegged to Bitcoin. But with a loose peg, where whatever the Bitcoin price is or whatever the gold price is, it relates to the Bitcoin price and Bitcoin relates to the gold price. And that basically they're transferable or transtradable. Here's something ridiculous, guys. Totally, absolutely ridiculous. The Fortnite players have to report V-Bucks on their taxes. V-Bucks is a cryptocurrency evidently used in the game of Fortnite. And I just find this totally ridiculous to even ask that question. Do they have to report it on their taxes? <laughs> but the ultimate conclusion to all of this is it says the IRS recognizes the language on our page potentially causes concern for some taxpayers. We have changed the language in order to lessen any confusion. Transacting in virtual currencies as part of a game that does not leave the game environment, virtual currencies that are not convertible, would not require a taxpayer to indicate this on their tax return. <laughs> so evidently your World of Warcraft money or your, uh, your money in your uh, V-Bucks on your Fortnite game, uh, you don't have to worry about that, evidently. But I, I just think it's ridiculous. Maybe in the end they will start coming after your World of Warcraft money because they need money. They're going broke. Governments around the world are going broke, and they're going to start more and more in a savage effort, savage effort to get whatever money they can out of the people. You know, they'll start going through your luggage, Looking for, and they'll start make you sign a paper. Right now, I think they make you sign a paper. It's ten thousand, you know, but they'll lower the amount from five thousand, and then to three thousand, and then to a thousand. They'll make you open up your wallet. They want to see how much cash you got in there. They'll be hunting for money. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the days of the old west. You know, when you're wanting to go someplace, and you go in a stagecoach. So you'd be going along with a stagecoach driver, and he's up top, you know, on top of the stagecoach, and you're down inside here, and you're, the horse is trotting along, and you're going, all of a sudden the horse stops. You wonder what's going on. It's a stagecoach robbery, and they, they, they open up the door, and there's a guy there with a mask on. He wants you to, to open your wallet and see what you got, and that's what the government's going to actually start to do to all the people because they're broke. And, you know, they've had so much money over the years from us. They've drained so much out of us that we're, got, we're all getting poor. We're poor, right? And they've wasted all that money we've given them all these years. They've made themselves fat and rich. You know, it works like this. Uh, you get to some uh, government official or whatever, you'll notice that his road is paved leading up to his house. And it might even be paved all the way up his driveway, paved by, paved by the taxpayer. And you drive on your road heading out to your house because you're not a public official or whatever. You're not a fat cat. And you'll find that it's, it's all full of potholes and everything else. They don't even repair it, you know. Uh, I mean, this is the way our society is. It's, a, it's not an even playing field. They can get away with stuff, too, that you wouldn't even want to try, you know. And it seems like they're getting more and more power all the time. The more trouble that happens in the world, the more power they get. And it just, I don't know where it all ends in the end. Anyway, I got straight off the topic. I'm going to take a look at cryptocurrencies today and see what they're doing. 280 billion market cap, 62.5% Bitcoin dominance. And a Bitcoin price of 96.20. So Bitcoin's holding its price there around 96.20, just under $10,000. And uh, what was this article here? Bitcoin price dives below $9,600, but the bears need to be cautious. You know what? The bears better be cautious. I'm going to tell you. 
bears better be cautious with gold and they better be cautious with Bitcoin because those are the two main ways out of the dollar. Those are the two roads lead out. Picture you're on a, a, a car and you're leaving New York City and there's been some sort of a ma major disaster in New York and everybody wants to get out of the city and there's only two roads out. Well, right now you might be ahead of the pack because you know about something that happened ahead of everybody else. And so the road's still half empty, you know. But if you sit there and you wait too long, that road's going to be packed with people leading out. Well, that's the way with Bitcoin and gold. Right now, the road is open and empty for Bitcoin and gold. Like, there's nobody, but they're all going to pack in. They're all going to pack in at a certain point, you know, and it's not too distant in the future. And when they pack in, you might as well pack it up and head home because you ain't going to get any more cheap Bitcoin. You ain't going to get any more cheap gold when the, when the herd comes, you know. And the worse world conditions get, the quicker we're heading toward that that moment when they all pack in and the dollar. Because what they're missing, these people who are buying into the dollar, and there's a lot of them out there, you know, right now, who are buying into the dollar for a safe haven. Buying into treasuries, buying into everything that's dollar denominated, trying to trying to trying to uh, trying to make some yield, trying to get ahead of the curve, trying to uh, trying to be safe in this this crazy economic conditions that we have going on right now all of a sudden what they're not missing what they're missing i mean what they're not getting is that the federal reserve can quite literally print unlimited quant and other central banks can print unlimited quantities of those monetary units there's no limit and in fact, the worse economic conditions get, the more they're going to print because that's the only thing that they can do. And they want to control power. They want to keep power. And things that we have coming in the world right now, encroaching on us, threaten to take their power away. They have to keep the core system going. What I mean by the core is the big, the big banks, including the central bank, and also businesses that are really big, like like businesses that are too big to fail. What's called too big to fail institutions. That that's the core. That's like a person, you know, their circulatory system. I mean, you have a core circulatory system where you got your big arteries and stuff, and the heart and everything else. You know, that's the core. The other places in your body where the circulatory system goes, like say the tip of your finger. That's, that's not the core. And so what will happen is, is when this real big crisis hits, and it's coming, you can see it coming. It's coming out of China, right? This giant crisis hits. They got to keep the core running or they lose power. And if they lose power, if they lose control over the system and they lose power, then they're done. They're, they are toast. And they know it, right? And so they have to maintain power. And in order to maintain power, they have to keep that core running. The core includes uh, all of the essential services, like your light, your power. Uh, if they let everything go down, everything go down, then they'll lose power and they'll lose control. And then their neck will be on the line. But they can't let that happen. So they're going to print in order to maintain power. And when they print, they're going to drive Everybody in the gold, silver, and cryptos. They, I can see it going this way, guys. And, I mean, it's not out there in our future a massive mile away. We can see that uh, the problem coming out of China is absolutely astro. It could drive this, make this happen so much faster. In fact, so fast it could make your eyes spin in your head. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.